How's it going everybody? Driver53 here and today we are going to be taking a look at if tires matter here for Farming Simulator 22. Not only are we going to be taking a look at the different configurations of your tires, but we're also going to be taking a look at the different brands of your tires. Now we do have a couple new brands here for Farming Simulator 22, so I wanted to make this video and kind of know exactly for sure which ones are the best for the different types of circumstances that I'm going to be doing on my farm. I've been wanting to make this video for a couple months now, and I finally figured out how to make a slope or a ramp here, as you see, pretty easily. I'm going to go and link the video up above if you're wanting to make one for yourself. All right, so let's get into exactly how I did this test. What we have here is the Case Magnum 400, but another thing that this tractor does has a lot of different tire configurations, and it also has all the different tire brands available. So what I've got here is this awesome mobile toolbox right here by Schultz Modding. Absolutely great mod. If you guys haven't picked it up yet, definitely look in the mod hub. It's a fantastic mod. So what I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to come down to customize. As you can see, we have a lot of different wheel setups. We've got a standard. We have a wheel weights. We have a wide tires, wide tires and weights. We have rear twin wheels. We have twin wheels all the way around. We have narrow twin wheels. We've got a little bit wider narrow twin wheels. They call it a number two here. Then we've got a crawler track a crawler track broad, which is just a little bit wider. Then you have a three meter, which is just a wider spread. I also went in Nokian and grabbed standard and standard two because Nokian offers a little bit different setup here. So I went ahead and, and grabbed these also. The way I ran this test is I've got a starting line right here. I loaded in every single time that I changed my tires to this exact same point right here. And we have a fence up there at the top. And whenever I hit that, that's when my time stopped. So how did I actually run the test? Well, I had to turn on my equipment every single time we had to hook up and then we lowered it down the equipment into the ground. Now, even though it's not going to give us the texture, we know that it's actually doing the work. So it is dragging just the same as if it was a harvested field and it's actually trying to subsoil. This subsolar has a 500 horsepower requirement and the Case Magnum 400 is 435 horsepower. So it's already at a disadvantage. And then you add this hill right here and it really, really struggles to get up the hill. And the reason I did this is I wanted to make sure we weren't going to reach the working speed of this equipment that we have here, the subsoiler. So all I did was I, uh, I looked at my camera right here. All right. So that way, whenever I got up to the top, I would be aligned with my fence and I would be able to tell exactly when it hit. And to actually run this test, all I did was just hit my cruise control. So here we go. As you can see, it's crawling up. Now, these are the standard tires right here, but it's only going to three miles an hour. You can see that it is really, really digging in here. And here we go. We're coming up on the finish and boom, right there is where I stopped my time. So on these tires right here, I had a time of 44.17 seconds. Now on these, I ran every single one of these using the trailer board. So I used the exact same brand but I changed the different configurations. So once again, the very first one that I ran were standard tires. This is the default setting for this tractor. The time was 44.17 seconds. Next, we had standard with wheel weights. You can see them there on the back. The time was 49.93 seconds. So a slowdown of almost six seconds. I would have thought that this would have actually been faster because you have more weight on the back tires kind of digging in but it wasn't the case. I ran this test two different times and I got the exact same answer both times. Next, we have the wide tires and they came in with a time of 41.98 seconds. That is about two and a half seconds faster than the standard tire. That is a really big decrease in time compared to the standard tire. I was actually really shocked that there was that much of a drop here with these tires. The fourth one here, we have wide with wheel weights and the same thing kind of happened. They slowed down. The time was 50.49. That's like eight seconds slower. And I was like, how in the world? And once again, I think it's just the extra weight that we have here on the rear of the tractor because it was even slower than the standard with wheel weights. It was about a half second slower. Now I know there might be a little bit of variance in my starting and stopping of my timer, but I don't think it's a half second. Usually that's about a 10th to a 10th and a half. So I, I think it's just the extra weight that you have back here. It's really, really interesting the way that this worked out. The next tractor that I tested was the rear twins. This has doubles on the back, but only singles on the front. And the time was 48.52. And having these rear twins was slower than having even standard tires or wide tires. And it's really, really 
almost shocking to me that by having that extra width back there, you're not actually getting any more performance out of the tires. And then I tested this one here, which is the twin front and rear. And oh my goodness, y'all, the time on this was 38.53 seconds. I ran this test three different times to make sure that it was correct. And 38.53 was the time to beat here for this tractor. This setup right here was almost six seconds faster than having a standard tire, or it was about three seconds, three and a half seconds faster than having a wide tire. And if you compare this to having just the rear twins, it's 10 seconds faster up this hill. Yes, a full 10 seconds by adding an extra tire on each side up front. That is insane. I did not believe it. That's why I ran it three different times. And then it really got me thinking that we've got two other configurations here with eight tires on the tractor. And I wonder how the narrow tires are going to perform. So that was the next one that we ran. And the time was 40.21 seconds for this one right here. Now, this is option number one, which sets just a little bit more narrow. Your tires are closer together. And it was about a second and a half, maybe almost two seconds slower than if you went with the traditional twins all the way around. And then I was like, okay, well, let's take a look at the other one. And what I realized is that it's more like a row crop set up here. And the time was almost identical. We came in with a time of 40.31 seconds. So a tenth of a second apart. I'm going to consider these almost exactly the same, if not exactly the same, because that could have been just a little bit of, you know, error in me hitting the buttons on time. These two right here really surprised me. And if you're trying to play a little bit more realistic where you want to have like a row crop option, I think these are going to be absolutely fantastic options for you. That's enough about these tractors with eight tires. Let's go take a look at something with two tires and two tracks. The first one that I want to take a look at was the crawler track right here. The time was 45.73. That's about a second and a half slower than just even a standard tire. And if you take and compare that to a wide tire, it's almost four seconds slower up this hill. The next one up is going to be the crawler track broad. It's just a little bit wider tracks here. And the time was 45.53. So only two tenths faster. Like I said, a little bit of that could be in my reaction time of hitting the button. So these two are very, very similar. And the last tractor here with crawlers on them is going to be the crawler track 3M. And I was really surprised by this because whenever you look at it, this one here, it just kind of barely sticks out a little bit. But then you look at this one here and it's actually quite a lot wider. And the time on this one came in at 42.83 seconds. That's about two and a half seconds faster than the other two were. So really, really interesting that you're uh, almost like a row crop setup here is going to be that much faster up this hill. And last, I wanted to go and take a look at the Nokian setups that we had here. We have two of them. The first one is called Nokian Standard. It came in with a time of 52.48 seconds, which is quite a bit slower than standard. And it's actually like the slowest thing up the hill, period. Well, technically, Nokian standard number two is the slowest thing up the hill because it came in with a time of 52.63. So if you're trying to do a lot of field work, I don't recommend these tires at all. The Nokians, I would stay away from them. So that means that this setup right here, the twins front and rear, is going to be the most efficient at working in anything with elevation. And the reason I said working on elevation is because I also ran this test on perfectly flat ground. Let's go take a look at that one. So here it is. I did it the exact same way. We had a starting line right here. I've got my toolbox right there and I have my finish line over there. All I did was just hit my cruise control. So as you can see, now we're getting up to about six, seven miles an hour. So I wasn't close to hitting that nine miles an hour that this working with is here. And I'm going to go and show you the other half of the spreadsheet here that you can see that the times weren't really that different. Now we did have the twin front and rear come in with the 2791, but everything else was really, really close to being almost exactly the same. And I mean, the spread on this was maybe about six tenths of a second between all of them. And that's in, even including the Nokians. If you take those out of there, it gets even closer. So if you're working on perfectly flat ground, I don't think the tire selection really matters. It's only once you start getting into your hills. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we were also going to take a look at tire brands. And what you can see here in front of you are six different tractors with the twins front and rear. So these are the six different brands that we have. Trailer Borg, Michelin, Continental, Midas, BKT, and Vredestein. 
all six of these are available with this setup. So I wanted to go ahead and compare what they were. That way I would know exactly which brand was going to be the best tire available for me whenever I go to plan out what tires and setups I want on my farms. So first right here, we had the trailer board. And once again, the time was a 38.53. Next, we had a Michelin that came in with almost the exact same time at a 38.77. So only about a quarter of a second slower here, but I would consider them identical on performance. The third brand here is Continental coming in with a time of 40.10 seconds. So a slowdown of about a second and a half compared to the other two. So I'm probably not going to run Continentals on my farm. The fourth brand we looked at here was Midas. And in Farming Simulator 19, Midas was the one that performed the best. So what was the time? It was a 38.72. So it's pretty much identical to the trailer board and the Michelin. So it doesn't really stand out as the leader of the pack now in Farming Simulator 22. The first new brand that we have in base game here for Farming Simulator 22 is BKT. Coming in with a time of 35.66. That is three seconds faster up the hill than Trailer Borg, Michelin, and Midas. Oh my goodness, y'all. BKT tires are not playing around here in Farming Simulator 22. And the last brand that I wanted to take a look at was the Vredesteins. Here, also another new brand here, base game in Farming Simulator 22, coming in with a time of 37.57. So they also beat Trailer Borg, Michelin, and Midas by about a second, but we're still two seconds slower than BKT. So based on my testing right here, I believe that the absolute best tires that you can get for base game equipment is going to be the BKT twins all the way around. Well, everybody, that's gonna be it for today. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you would. If you want to stay up to date on any other testing videos that we do here on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell also. Have a great day, night, evening, everybody. Until next time, this is Driver53, signing off.